I'm Gail Buckner. Welcome to Fox on Money, where you get straight answers to your personal finance questions. As a senior vice president for Putnam Investments, I spend my week helping people make smarter decisions about where to put their money. If you've put money into a variable annuity, Forbes magazine says you're a sucker. As you might expect, those in the investment industry beg to differ. We'll also hear how to handle the financial challenge of being a single parent. But first, this Fox on Money memo featuring the top financial stories of the past week and those likely to make headlines in the week ahead. The trade deficit hit its highest level in nine years in 1997. Experts predict it will get even worse this year due to the economic slowdown in Asia. The good news? Lower prices on imports are keeping inflation in check. Prices at the wholesale level fell seven-tenths of a percent last month. From the high-tech sector, Computer Sciences says it will rather fight than give in to a $9.8 billion takeover bid from Computer Associates. Dell Computer surprised analysts by announcing fourth quarter profits soared 52%. For the week, the Dow Industrials Average, the S&P 500, and NASDAQ Composite all posted gains. In the week ahead, expect word on consumer prices and consumer confidence. Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan gives Congress his semi-annual evaluation of the economy. We'll also get numbers on existing home sales, jobless claims, and durable goods orders. Now to today's top topic. You probably didn't hear a peep on Main Street, but they've been screaming on Wall Street. The cause, a recent cover story in Forbes magazine trashing variable annuities, one of the fastest growing investments. The article called them ripoffs and labeled anyone who invests in one gullible and a sucker. The investment industry called the article biased and badly researched. In the interest of providing fair and balanced reporting on an issue that affects an estimated 20 million Americans, we invited both sides to argue their case. We regret that after initially accepting our invitation, Forbes reporter Carolyn Gear backed out. However, joining me in the studio today are Mark Mackey, President and CEO of the National Association of Variable Annuities, Jerry Golden, Executive Vice President with The Equitable, which, like Putnam, the company I work for, is a major provider of variable annuities. We also have Certified Financial Planner Tom Orecchio with Greenbaum & Associates in Oradell, New Jersey. Do you own an annuity thinking of investing in one? Why? Call our experts at one 888 tell fox Mark, let me start with you. The cover of the Forbes magazine article says, don't be a sucker. You are one, implying, if you own a variable annuity. Why did the variable annuities industry find it so upsetting, this article? Well, Gail, I, that had to be by far the most biased article against variable annuities I've ever seen. Uh, it was full of inaccuracies and misleading statements. Uh, it presented just one side of the story. We've had negative stories before, but at least there was an opposing point of view. There was no other side of the story here, and that's not even legitimate journalism. Jerry? The, uh, I think the starting point uh, where the reporter got off was to compare a variable annuity, which is a total retirement program, to a single investment, in particular an index fund. It's really, it's not even apples and oranges, it's apples and, and apple pie. A, a variable annuity deals not only with the accumulation of uh, assets for retirement, but the distribution. It is a self-completing retirement program not a single fund or a single investment. Tom, as someone who is a neutral person in this, I mean, you're a financial advisor, it's your fiduciary responsibility to recommend investments that are only appropriate for the client that you have before you. Correct. Are, are variable annuities that black and white? Are they as bad as the article painted them? No, I don't think they're as bad as the article painted them. There were some very accurate points in the article, but there were certainly some inaccurate points in the article, and I think that uh, the purpose of today is to go through exactly what is accurate and what is not. What kind of person would come into your office and walk out with a variable annuity? Well, uh, we don't sell products, so I can't say somebody would walk out of our office with an annuity. It's more likely somebody will walk into our office with an annuity. It's my job to then say to them, is, does this make sense for your financial future? Okay, so what kind of person would a variable annuity make sense for? There's a number of situations where a variable annuity is appropriate. Uh, high tax bracket, somebody who needs to shelter uh, their assets from creditors, depending upon state law. Uh, people, most importantly, who have maxed out on their retirement plans, their 401ks, their IRAs, the Roth IRA. If they've maxed out on all those programs, means they've fully funded them, then it might make sense to use a variable annuity because of the tax shelter uh, feature of an annuity. Okay. 
unsure of what all the fuss is all about, we'll explain how a variable annuity works and take your calls right after this. a retirement investment that combines life insurance with mutual funds. The insurance guarantees your heirs will inherit at least as much as you invest, even if your investments go down in value. It also protects the gains. The money grows tax deferred, like in a traditional IRA. Another similarity, money taken out is taxed at your ordinary tax rate. And if you make a withdrawal before you're 59 and a half, the IRS slaps you with a penalty. Forbes magazine recently slapped the entire variable annuity industry, saying the tax deferral is just about the only good thing you can say about these investment products. Almost everything else about them is bad. My guests are Mark Mackey with NAVA, Jerry Golden with The Equitable, and certified financial planner Tom Orecchio. Our phone lines are open at one 888 fox Gentlemen, let me continue with the rest of that Forbes quote. Um, Almost everything else about them is bad, and they go on to say the high, sometimes outlandishly high costs, the lack of liquidity, the fact that the annuity converts low-taxed capital gains into high-taxed ordinary income. Mark, let's, let's hit on these high, sometimes allegedly outlandishly high costs. What's the average cost of, say, a variable annuity? About 2%. All right, and how does that compare to, in, in this writer's view, a mutual fund, which would be better? About 1.4%. There are additional fees with a variable annuity, but those fees go to pay for the insurance benefits, which would be the death benefit and the right to annuitize the contract. So you are paying some more, but you're getting something for it. Uh, the other point is, is that uh, the differential is just going to depend on the particular product you're looking at. Some products are going to be more expensive than others because they have more bed, bells and whistles, like enhanced death benefits, that sort of thing. Yeah, the, the other point I would make is uh, Again, we're, we're comparing a single mutual fund to a variable annuity that has 10, 20, in fact, 30 different investment options, often uh, not from the same money manager. So I think it's erroneous to, to compare a single mutual fund. Well, in this case, for people who haven't read the Forbes article, um, the writer suggests just 
put your money in the S&P 500 index, which is an unmanaged index, right? And, and frankly, if the market goes down, we'll go down equal with the market, um, compared to uh, an annuity, which offers some, what, investment. benefits? It has investment choices. It has a whole range of asset classes, often from different money managers. Most new variable annuities have a fixed account, sort of a place to like go. Like a CD, where you get a, a guaranteed CD, rate of return. CD. So between the variable funds and the fixed funds, you may have 25 investment choices. You have lots of withdrawal options. You have the ability to convert it into a lifetime income. So again, you're comparing a single fund versus a complete retirement program. It's as if I said, how does a, ver how does a mutual fund compare to a 401k plan? It's not a fair comparison. So you've comparison. got a, a bigger menu with a, with a, a variable annuity. But, but Tom, what about the idea that in a variable annuity, when you take money out, you're taxed at your ordinary tax rate, that you don't benefit from a lower capital gains rate? And that's one of the disadvantages of an annuity. Uh, even though it does have the tax deferral, when you remove money from um, an annuity, you are taxed at ordinary income tax rates versus capital gains. All right, we'll be gains. back to answer more of your questions. Stay with us. In a recent and highly critical article, Forbes magazine declared the investment landscape is littered with victims of aggressive variable annuities salespeople. That's in direct contrast to a Gallup poll where 93% of variable annuity owners called them an effective way to save for retirement. So what's the story? The Forbes reporter declined our invitation. So joining me to take your questions are Mark Mackey with NAVA, Jerry Golden with The Equitable, and certified financial planner Tom Orecchio. If you've got questions for our experts, give us a call. one 888 tell fox Gentlemen, let's go straight to the phones. 
We have uh, Lita holding on the phone from San Antonio. Hi, Lita. Your question, Hello. please. <coughs> yes. I have some money in a uh, tax-deferred annuity. I'm not knowledgeable about everything. And when you're talking about variable, what was the difference in that and the ones I have? Can you tell me again the type you think you have? It, well, it's it's only thing I know is tax deferred and tax it's with defer Delta. All right. Well, all annuities have tax deferral as one of the benefits. Your money grows without being taxed on the growth every year. You're not taxed on it until you take the money out. Uh, do you know if you have a fixed annuity or a variable annuity? No, I don't know. Oh. I'm I'm 74 years old and I don't need the money. And I, when I this man helped me to do it, and he said that if I didn't need it, he could make it grow. Well, um, who wants to take that question? Well, it's, it sounds like as a tax deferred annuity, it is probably a, a fixed annuity. Doesn't seem like what's uh, the difference in a fix? The, the fixed annuity is backed by the insurance company. They guarantee your 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 account value. They credit you with an interest rate like a CD. It's a every guaranteed year. return. Guar That's what you get. It's a guaranteed return, and you have uh, guarantee of your principal. A uh, yes. variable annuity depends upon the series of investment choices you make, a series of uh, mutual funds, and your performance is based uh, on the results of those underlying mutual funds. I don't make any choices. Okay. The Delta Company does that. Uh, so it, it sounds like you have a uh, you have a fixed a fixed annuity, mm -hmm. uh, and again, most annuities have been designed ultimately to provide you with retirement income. Yes. Uh, if if you do hold it uh, till and pass it on to your your, your heirs, it's going to be taxed. At, the gain's going to be taxed at ordinary income. You ought to know that. When when, for instance, if I died and they get it in the will, they'll have to pay the taxes. There'll be, there'll, there will be an income tax due on the gain between.